Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Hannah. Uh, as Drew said, I'm a professor at UMass Amherst. Uh, I also like to play a lot of roller derby where I go by the name Logistic Aggression. Um, <laughs> why not, right? Um, so, what I'm going to be talking about today is government transparency and topic models. Where do I point this at? Okay. Nope, back. Awesome. So I'm sure you all know that the US government protects a massive amount of data as part of its security classification system. But what you might not know is how much data we're talking about. So in 2011 alone, uh, 52 million pages were reviewed for potential declassification, of which 26 million pages were then actually declassified. And 11, uh, $11 billion dollars were spent on administering the US government classification system. This is a lot of data, and a lot of data that's actually being made available to the public every year. And something I've been wondering about is, can we get hold of this data, people like me? And the answer is yes. It turns out there's 100,000 previously, de previously classified government documents available online as part of the declassified document repository. Um, these documents are of wide interest to a whole bunch of people, uh, mostly transparency scholars and historians who spend a lot of time sitting down and reading each individual document. But this kind of got me thinking, and I started to think, well, maybe there's something more that I could do here. Maybe there's something that I could do that would look at the collection as a whole, rather than just looking at one or two documents here and there. And it turns out that there's, there's a lot of information about every document. Um, you have the date that the document was issued, you have the date that the document was declassified, you have information about who issued the document, the classification level, and most interestingly to me, you have the document text. So why am I interested in the text? Well, firstly, I work with text data. That's what I do for a living. So of course, I'm going to be interested in the text. But aside from anything else, it's the text that caused these documents to be classified in the first place. And in addition to that, there's only so much you can learn by looking at the met metadata alone. So in 2007, the FBI released a whole bunch of documents about John Lennon. And from looking at the metadata, you would assume there was a lot of highly sensitive material in there. But as we can see from this quote on the slide, this is in fact not the case. <laughs> so I thought it might be fun to actually take a look at the text of these documents. And from my point of view, the first thing I do when I have a large collection of documents is I want to perform some kind of exploratory analysis. I want to answer the question, what is it that these documents are telling me that I don't already know? And usually when I do this kind of thing, I turn to a particular class of model, namely statistical topic models. And statistical topic models, are they're unsupervised, so no human intervention. Uh, they're models for large, unstructured document collections that are too big for any one human to sit down and read. And what they do is they uncover hidden thematic structure, in other words, topics, in these documents. And I mean something very specific when I say topic. I mean a specialized probability distribution over some fixed vocabulary. So here on the slide, we have four different topics. And you'll see that some words will occur in the top words of multiple different topics. Equivalently, every topic contains every word, but with a different probability. So what topic models are good at doing is finding out what the topics are that best characterize a particular document collection. They also work out which composition of topics best account for each document in the collection. And the thing to note here is that these models don't make any assumption that each document is about exactly one topic. No, instead, each document is about multiple different topics in various different compositions. I'm not going to talk about any of the math for learning this kind of stuff from real world data, but rest assured, there is a bunch of math in there. It's a lot of fun, and there are some excellent papers out there, including that one up there, which was the first paper on these class of models. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to show you some pictures. So I ran one of these models on these, I, I guess, 88,000 previously classified government documents and took a look at some of the topics that came out. Here's a topic. Uh, where the top words are church, Catholic, Pope, Vatican, religious. I thought, all right, well, there's clearly something going on here. You know, that's clearly a coherent theme. But why is this, how does this relate to these classified documents? What is this doing here? 
So what I did was I plotted the percentage of a typical document issued, that's the black line, and declassified, that's the red line, in every year that the database spans. What we see is that there's a really big spike somewhere around 1942. And I thought, well, that's strange. What happened in 1942? So I googled for church, Catholic, Pope, Vatican, and 1942. And it turns out that 1942 was the year that Pope Pius XII made a Christmas address about the Holocaust. And this was a really big deal. There was a lot of discussion going on. Turns out that's what these documents are about. Over here, we have another topic. The top words here are draft, service, manpower, volunteer. And here we have a massive spike around 1969, the year of the first draft uh, for the Vietnam War. We also have a spike in declassification. So these documents are being declassified in 2003, which was around about the beginning of the Iraq War. Uh, finally, here's a topic uh, where the top words are atomic, weapon, bomb, and bombs. And here you can see we have this big spike and then sort of dying off, starting somewhere in the 50s, late 40s and 50s. Uh, 1952 was the year of the first hydrogen bomb test. Um, actually, the spike over there in 89, this is documents about Pakistan. Um, the other interesting thing about this is that the declassification pattern, so the curve in red, mirrors the shape of that curve, mirrors the shape of the black curve, which is interesting. So probably these documents are being subject to uh, systematic declassification after 25 years or something. Uh, what else can we do with data like this? Well, rather than just exploring it, we can make predictions. And these might be predictions about information missing from the data, or it might be predictions about future unseen documents. And that's what I'm working on at the moment, or have been working on for the past little while. Um, I've been working on predicting classification durations. In other words, if I have some classified document, how long is that document going to stay classified? Um, as you might imagine, this depends heavily on the content of the document, the text. And so as a result, it turns out that using ideas from statistical topic modeling, <laughs> kinds of models I was just talking about, really makes a big difference if you're trying to come up with accurate predictions of classification duration. And that's all I wanted to say. Uh, I want to thank my collaborators, Bruce Damaris, Rachel Shorey, and Mr. Sprinkles. Um, and I would say, let's go and emulate this adorable dinosaur and go stuff ourselves over lunch. But we already had lunch. I was supposed to talk beforehand. Thanks. That's it.